This is an interesting question posed by a medical colleague about risk that requires the kind of critical decision making typical in medical studies. For patients with a particular medical condition, the mortality rate is known to be 25%. That's the so-called control rate. So 25% of patients die within some specified time, say for example, within two years of being diagnosed with a disease. A new treatment which can be properly demonstrated to reduce the mortality rate, i.e. that 25% rate, will be recommended to patients with this condition. And let's suppose that two treatments, A and B, have been trialled and tested against the null hypothesis of no improvement on the 25% mortality rate. Treatment A is based on a large trial of 5,200 patients, of whom exactly 24% die, that's 1,248. So the observed mortality rate for treatment A is 24%, which is indeed 1% less than the control rate. Treatment B is based on a much smaller trial of 27 patients, of whom three die. So the observed mortality rate is much lower here, it's just over 11%, but it's a much smaller sample. Which treatment should be chosen? A, B, both A and B, or neither A or B? We're going to show that a Bayesian hypothesis testing model provides far more informative solution to this problem than you would get from a classical statistical null hypothesis p-test. Here's the Bayesian model we're going to use to answer this question. And the prior assumption that we're going to make is that we know nothing about the mortality rate of either A or B. So we're going to assume it's a uniform distribution. It's just as likely to be any value between 0 and 100%. So there's the uniform distribution defined for the mortality rate for A and it's similarly defined for B. For any given number of patients in a trial, what's the expected number of deaths? Well, it's simply defined as a binomial distribution where the number of trials is the number of trials, the number of people in the trial, and the probability of success is just the mortality rate divided by 100. So this assumes that deaths are independent and equally likely based on the mortality rate. So similarly for number of deaths in B again, it's the number of in trial of B and the mortality rate for B divided by 100. How do we find this probability that a patient is more likely to survive with B than with A? Well, it's simply defined as if the mortality rate for B is less than the mortality rate for A, then true, else false. And what about this one? The mortality rate is no less than the control rate. Well, if the mortality rate is greater than or equal to 25, then true, else false. Same over here for B. If the mortality rate is greater than or equal to 25, true, else false. OK, so now let's enter the evidence of the trials. We know that for drug A, 5,200 patients were enrolled. And we know that 1,248 which is exactly 24%, died. And for treatment B, we know that there were 27 patients enrolled, of whom three died. And that's just over 11%. So let's just remind ourselves what the priors were for these things. And now let's run the model. Now you can see how it's learnt the mortality rate for A and B. What you can see is that the learnt distribution for the A mortality rate is much less uncertain than that for B. It's quite peaky, with a mean, as you'd expect, of around 24%. What that means is that even though the trial rate mortality for A was 24%, i.e. just under the control rate of 25%, there's actually only a small probability, less than 5%, that the mortality rate is no less than the control rate. So there's not that much uncertainty about it. Uh, similar to the p-value in a classical null hypothesis test, the probability of incorrectly rejecting the null hypothesis of no improvement. So we'd kind of like reject that null hypothesis at the 5% level because it's lower than that for treatment A. 
Now in contrast for treatment B, the learnt mortality rate is very uncertain. And consequently, despite the fact that there was only an 11% mortality rate for treatment B, there's actually a higher probability that we would wrongly reject the null hypothesis in this case. So it's above 5%. So at the 5% level, we would not recommend treatment B. And yet, if we look at the probability that a patient is more likely to survive, then B is clearly much better. There's almost a 93% chance that a patient is more likely to survive with B than A. Now let's clear everything that we've done and compare what we did there with the classical p-value approach. In this approach, we have to calculate the probability of getting the evidence if the null hypothesis for the treatment is true. So that means we have to assume that the mortality rate is equal to 25% for each of the treatments. Now we're going to enter the number of trials again. So again, number of trials for A, and number of trials for B. Now when we calculate the model, we get these distributions for the number of deaths for A and B. So the distributions that you see here are just the binomial distributions where n is 5,200 and p is 25% for A and n is 27 and p is 25% for B. But of course we observed less than the expected number of deaths in each case and so we can use the information about that distribution to compute the probability that we would have observed that few deaths if the true mortality rate was 25% and I now reveal these two hidden nodes which are going to give you that calculation. As we observe 1, 2, 4, 8 deaths for A, this probability is true if the number of deaths observed was less than 1, 2, 4, 9. And we do exactly the same for treatment B. Then these probabilities are exactly the p-values for classical hypothesis testing. The p-value for A is below the 5% threshold, so we'd recommend treatment A. But the p-value for B is above the 5% threshold, so we don't recommend B. And yet, as we saw with the Bayesian approach, the probability of surviving with B is much higher than surviving with A. So again, that indicates the severe limitations of classical p-value hypothesis testing. Mm -hmm.